Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you how to EQ electric guitar in just three steps. Today we're going over how to EQ electric guitars, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process, in its entirety, and really start to hone your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process, step by step, to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide, and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at these electric guitars. Let me start here by playing you the finished mix here, here so you can hear what we're working with with this song. And then I'll hone in on uh, the electric guitars we're going to look at. We're mainly going to focus on one, but then we're going to see how the same principles apply to the secondary electric guitar as well. So I'll solo both of those up for you so you can hear them as well. Let's start here. You can hear the finished mix for this song. Wait, wait. So those are the two electric guitars we're going to look at. Like I said, we're mainly going to focus on uh, the right guitar here, and then we're going to hop over and we're going to see how the same principles apply to the secondary guitar or the left electric guitar. I'm going to flip into mono here, just so we're not listening to an electric guitar panned all the way off to one side. And we're going to jump into the EQ here. I'm going to hit play and pull up the EQ and you can kind of see what we're doing here. You can hear how much cleaner our electric guitar sound is with the EQs, with the processing in. It really cleans up that bottom end, pulls out all that muddiness, and gives some emphasis to that crunchiness, that, that little bit of grit and breakup we have coming through on the top end and in the mid-range there. It gives the guitar a lot of focus here. So, let me pull off all the processing here, all of our moves on this EQ. And we're going to start with mainly just these two filters, and then we're going to throw in this one move here. So. The first step when EQing electric guitar is getting rid of what you don't need and honing in on the fundamental frequencies of this guitar. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm throwing in a high pass filter. We're rolling up the high pass here. It's 12 dB per octave slope to about 140 hertz. So rolling off all that lower octave, getting rid of all that stuff down below 100 and focusing in on where the low end of the guitar really is, which is usually around 200 with electric guitars. So take a listen with and without this uh, high pass filter. Just the high pass filter goes a long way to clean up the guitar sound and tighten down that frequency range. We don't need all that stuff down below 100, and if we have that in there, it's really just going to fight with our bass guitar. And you've probably heard me say before if you watch any of my videos, I don't like a lot of low end that's panned wide, so all that stuff down to like 80 and 70 and stuff coming in on the electric guitar, I don't like that to be panned out wide, unless it's like a bigger kind of metal style track, then you want that low end on the, on the sides. But we don't need that in this track here. The next thing we're doing, coming up here in the low mids, same thing here, right? Step one, getting rid of what we don't need. So we're at 286, and we're pulling out about 2.5 dB of this muddiness. So take a listen without. I'll click it in. You can hear what we're getting rid of, and I'll boost it up so you can see the frequency range that we're focusing in on.
just two and a half dB there at 286 gets rid of that muddiness and again tightens up our frequency range right makes more room for that top end to come through the mid range to come through on the electric guitar because those are the important frequencies that help the guitar cut through the mix all this muddiness here will just build up as we stack in guitars and stack in other instruments in the mix and you can see you don't want to go too far when I pulled that that frequency range down even further you start to kind of hollow out the guitar sound you don't want to do that I, I know it's it's tempting to do to kind of get rid of all of this frequency range here so you can hear all that top end more but it's better to get rid of a little bit of it and then boost up the top end otherwise you end up with this kind of hollow sounding electric guitar sound last thing we're doing here for step one is we're rolling off some of the top end here some of the super super highs because boosting up on the top end of electric guitar it can start to get too harsh or too pokey so putting in a low pass filter like this is a nice kind of precautionary measure to make sure your guitar doesn't get too harsh on the top end so take a listen here it's not going to be a huge change but it's a a subtle safety measure uh, to make sure our guitar sound is nice and tight and honed in on the fundamental frequency range we're at about 9k here on the low pass filter Not a big change there, but it's just a nice precautionary measure when we start boosting top end here. So, the second step here with EQing electric guitar is to boost up some of the top end here. So emphasize that brightness up on the top end, and it's going to help bring out some of that, that crispiness and that crunch as well, that breakup that we're getting on the top end of the electric guitar. I'm here at about 4K, and that's usually a good range to start in, anywhere from about you know 2.5K up to about 5K. Anywhere above that, and that's where you're going to start emphasizing that that kind of harsh or po pokey frequency range on electric guitar. And if they're big distorted electric guitars, you're going to pull up a lot of noise up on the top end. So 2.5k to about 5k is a good frequency range to boost in. I usually find myself sitting around 4k here. We're doing about a 2 dB boost, and I'll, I'll bump it up as well so you can hear the range we're affecting. It's just enough of a boost to help our guitar kind of poke its head through all of the other instruments in the track so you hear it out on the sides. You don't want this dark, dull sounding electric guitar unless that's the tone you're going for with your track. If you want to keep keep it kind of you know low end heavy and not emphasize that brightness, so if you're looking for a darker sort of tone, then maybe this boost isn't for you. But if you want that brightness on your electric guitar, anywhere from this 3 to 4K boost here is going to give you that brightness and like I said, emphasize that kind of crunchiness that little bit of breakup on electric guitar. Now, the last and final step here, step three when EQing electric guitar, is to emphasize the mid-range. So I like to do this with um, either an API style EQ, so there's this 550 style EQ, or there's the, if I turn this on here, there's the, where is it at? The Solar 69 EQ. Uh, they both have a band that's right around one and a half K. I believe the Solar 69 is at 1.4 K. Here we're at 1.5 K. And just bumping up this 1.5k band in the mid frequency up to 2 dB gives you that perfect emphasis in the mid range on electric guitar. On electric guitar, mid range is what you're selling. It's what makes electric guitar sound like electric guitar. So take a listen here. Um, I'm going to turn off the compressor as well. Without this boost, and then when I click it in, you can hear how suddenly our electric guitar feels full and it feels like an electric guitar. That's the frequency range we're looking for, right? To round out our electric guitar and make it feel full. When you have just the bottom end and then you boost the top end, sometimes you can get that really scooped sounding electric guitar. That's again why you don't want to go too far down here, otherwise you end up with a hollow, scooped sounding electric guitar. Once you get your low end and your bottom end, or your top end and your bottom end in place here, you want to get that mid-range emphasis on electric guitars because that's what helps them feel full and help them be full range 
uh, in your mix. You don't need all that bottom end, you don't need the super, super highs, but right there from like 100, 150, up to about 10K, that's the range you want your electric guitar living in, and you want it to be full all the way throughout. And this boost here at 1.5K, or up in the mid range, really helps with that. So let's take a listen one more time here, with and without the EQs, and then I'll throw it back in the mix as well so you can hear what we're doing uh, in context. Last but not least here, I don't want to overlook the secondary electric guitar here, so let me just briefly run through the same EQ here. So you can see, remember what's step one? Step one is getting rid of what we don't need on the electric guitar. So getting rid of that, that muddiness, cleaning up the bottom end, making sure our top end's not cutting through. You can see we're going a little bit further here. Then step two, getting that brightness, that crunchiness up on the top end. So we're up at 5K here, a little bit further up, but you can see that's why we tuck this down a little bit further on the top end. And then our final step, emphasizing the mid-range. Same API EQ here, boost in the 2 dB at 1.5K. Final thing here, let me play both electric guitars together and I will AB the EQs on both of them here. steps, three EQ steps to take your dull sounding electric guitar to sounding clean and to sounding nice and bright inside your mix. So getting rid of what we don't need, boosting up that brightness on the top end, and then emphasizing the mid-range. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.